we're going to talk about how to draw Lewis structures. Lewis structures are cartoons that show how atoms are connected in molecules. They contain a lot of information if you know how to look, but first you have to learn how to draw them. We're going to talk about two methods and both require some background knowledge. So the things you need to know are first the number of valence electrons for each atom. That is the electrons that are outside the core and available for bonding. So typical atoms are hydrogen which has one valence electron, boron three, carbon four, nitrogen five, oxygen six, fluorine seven, fluorine and the rest of the halogens. Now you also have to know how many bonds the atom normally forms. That's called the valence, and for hydrogen it's one. Boron three, carbon four. But nitrogen, the valence or the number of bonds it normally forms is three, oxygen two, and fluorine and the rest of the halogens is one. For method one, what you do is you draw out the bonds first and then rearrange the rest of the electrons to make sure that you've used them all up. There are a number of rules that you can use to, uh, to do this uh, and they'll work for anything but it's really hard to see how the bonds form. Here they are. The first one is you calculate the total valence electrons. If you have positively charged ions you remove that number of electrons and for negative ions you add the same number of electrons. Then you write the skeleton structure. This is the hard part. It takes practice and the way the structure is written may give you a clue or it may not. Um, you really have to practice and practice at this. You use two electrons for each bond and then you count up the number of electrons that you've used. That is how many you've used in the bonds and then you can figure out how many you've got left. You have to use them all and show up where they all are in your Lewis structure. Make sure that each atom, except hydrogen or boron, has eight electrons by adding lone pairs. And if there are not enough electrons, form multiple bonds. Let's take a look at some examples. Here's a simple example, CH4. If we count up the valence electrons, we have a total of eight one for each hydrogen and four for carbon. Now we have to attach the atoms and we use two electrons for each bond. And there's only one way we can attach CH4 because carbon forms four bonds and hydrogen forms only one. Now if we count up the electrons used, we've used two in each bond, so we've used eight electrons. We've used them all up, so we're done. Easy. Let's take a look at a little more complicated example, C2H6O. If we add up the number of valence electrons, we're going to use 20 valence electrons. And then we have to draw out the skeleton structure, the connections, the, num the single bonds with two electrons per bond. And it turns out there's more than one way that you can connect C2H6O. But remembering our rules, we know that carbon can only form four bonds and oxygen usually forms two. So here's one, one structure where we've got CCO in the middle and here's the other structure, COC. We've got two bonds on each oxygen and four bonds on each carbon, one for each hydrogen. So now, if we count up the number of electrons that we've used in these structures, we see that each structure has the same number of bonds, eight. And so we've used 16 electrons. That means we've got four more to place. Where should we put them? Well, if we look at the oxygens, they don't have enough electrons. Uh, they've only got two bonds, and what we need to do is to place the four, more, the four electrons on the oxygen on each structure so that we now, when we, when we do our electron count total, we've used all the electrons, we've got the right number of bonds and the right number of lone pairs on every atom, so we're done.
There's another method that you can use, which is a little more intuitive. And in this one, what you do is you draw all the atoms with their valence electrons, and then you connect them up. This way, it actually helps you see where those lone pairs come from, for example. So, for example, if we use CH4 again, in this case, what we do is we write out the atoms in the order you think they're connected. Again, this is the hard part. So carbon's got four valence electrons and hydrogen has got one. And then what you do is you just connect up the, uh, the atoms again using two electrons for each bond. So we get the same structure, CH4. And we check to see if everything's okay. We got carbon with the right number of bonds and hydrogen also. So we're okay. We're good to go. If we've got leftover electrons, we, they, they automatically are lone pairs. Let's take a look. If we've got water, for example, H2O, we draw out the uh, oxygen and hydrogen atoms. Oxygen has got six valence electrons and hydrogen one. So if we let those bonds form using two electrons, we see that we've automatically got those two lone pairs on there. It's really important not to forget those lone pairs. We check to see if everything's okay, and it is. Oxygen two bonds, Hydrogen 1, everything accounted for. One more example. If we don't have enough electrons to form bonds, we form multiple bonds. For example, C2H4. In this case, we've got two carbons and four hydrogens, and we write them out. We know we have to have a carbon-carbon bond in there because hydrogen can only form one bond. It has to be on the end. We let the bonds form, two electrons for each bond, and we see that there are two electrons, one on each carbon, that haven't been formed into a bond yet. If we draw that bond, we see we've got a double bond. Everything's okay again. Carbon's got four bonds, hydrogen one. We're okay and good to go. In practice, when you're doing this, I recommend that you use one method to draw the structures and the other method to check whether the structures are correct. If the number of bonds and electrons is not the usual, you may need to add a formal charge, and we'll get to that later.